Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stu again, and this is Stu's News, a review of American high-speed rail happenings over the past month. In this January 2024 episode, we'll take a look at what went down in December of 2023. The biggest news of December was the announcement of Federal State Partnership for Intercity Passenger Rail National Grants. Eight billion in grants were announced for projects outside of the Northeast Corridor. We'll touch upon those grants briefly in this video. However, I have another video called Revenge of California High Speed Rail detailing the grants that will affect high speed rail, so check that out when you're done here. Link in the card above and in the description. Speaking of California High Speed Rail, let's start there. The project received $3.1 billion from the FSP National Program. This closes about one third of the projected funding gap for the 171 mile initial operating segment from Merced to Bakersfield. The California High Speed Rail Authority estimates they'll still need another five to seven billion from this point. Funds will go toward train set procurement and track laying in the coming years. Project CEO Brian Kelly was quoted in an LA Times article expressing that California High Speed Rail would like to team up with Brightline on train sets for the two systems. I'll get back to that idea in the Brightline West portion of this video. Additional funds may be difficult to come by as California's budget woes have gotten even worse. The state is now projecting nearly $70 billion in deficits next year probably not much money to spare for high-speed rail in the short term beyond what is already allocated. Madera is currently working on planning for phase three of its passenger train station relocation. The station is being moved from a bizarre spot north of the city along BNSF tracks to a bizarre spot east of the city between BNSF tracks and future California high-speed rail tracks. It's almost like King's Tulare 2.0 and it's only 18 miles from the planned Fresno station to boot. The Madera station will serve Amtrak San Joaquin's on the BNSF line starting in 2025. Phase three involves expansion of the station to accommodate California high-speed rail traffic coming from the Bay Area. That would be completed in coordination with construction of the Central Valley to Silicon Valley segment Overall, a very suburban park and ride type design, although the claim is that development in the area will be transit oriented. Now let's take a look at the Finance and Audit Committee reports. Capital Outlay Budget Summary, October expenditures up to $200 million. This is a good number. Let's look at the Design Build Expenditures chart. A big month like August, but if you'll recall, August had some big change orders, so let's check out the risk contingency. Like I hinted at last month, some big change orders hit the contingency pot to the tune of $323 million. When you combine this with other data, it's telling you they're going over budget rather than markedly increasing output. Which brings up construction labor force numbers. 1,433, pretty sure that's an all-time high. But when will we start seeing the impact in months that aren't inflated by change orders? Doesn't look like it will be next month with preliminary expenditures for November at a measly $100 million. Keep in mind the data for these F&A reports is two months behind. Since I get a fair amount of misinformed comments about the fiscal state of the project, I wanted to go over a couple of slides to clear things up. This is total project expenditures with forecasts. You can see here total expenditures through October of 2023 is $11.8 billion. 10.6 billion of that is construction related. Let's look at cash on hand and funding still available. They've issued 5.9 billion in bonds. That means 3.1 billion remain to be sold. They also still have 478 million in cash from previous bond sales. Cap and trade balance. The project gets 25% of cap and trade receipts through 2030. This varies year to year, but is roughly 1 billion a year lately. Cash balance on that account is 2.6 billion. Add in the 3.1 billion from FSP National and they have about 6.2 billion to work with. With that, let's say goodbye to California High Speed Rail and hello to Brightline West. 
Brightline West received $3 billion in FSP national grants this year, so the big question now is, when does construction start? Last month, we speculated it would be at least a few months. West Edens indicated in an interview that they were hoping for the first part of 2024. At a Regional Transportation Commission of Southern Nevada meeting, it was mentioned that Brightline was looking to break ground in May. They also laid out the sequence of events that needs to happen to get there. This article in the IE Community News has a Rancho Cucamonga official stating that Brightline is aiming to break ground in Las Vegas by the end of January. That could very well be the start of grading at the station site. Then again, the same person is quoted as saying that Brightline in Florida runs from Tampa to Orlando, so take that with a grain of salt. So you're telling me there's a chance. Brightline also posted some video of colorful fencing they put up at the Las Vegas station site. The Federal Railroad Administration is working on a waiver to buy American requirements for Brightline West. Several things to unpack here. First, it confirms suspicions that Siemens and Alstom are the competitors to provide the train sets. Based on all the evidence, Siemens' offering would be the American Pioneer 220 or a variant. This is based on their Valaro Novo design. Alstom's offering would be a higher power variant of the Avelia Liberty that Amtrak is currently trying to get into service on the Northeast Corridor. Also remember what California High Speed Rail CEO Brian Kelly said about teaming up on train set procurement. They could end up using the same train sets. This would be similar to the waiver Amtrak received for the NEC Alstom Avelia Liberties where they produce the power cars in the United States and the passenger car bodies are imported from Europe for assembly here, so there is precedent. Part of the waiver is for control systems. Brightline has a special need to be able to switch to passing sidings at high speed since their initial design relies on single track right of way. Apparently no domestic manufacturers for these systems exist. Brightline has chosen Siemens for this, which means Siemens might provide the same for California High Speed Rail. Still with Brightline, but moving to Florida, Brightline is moving ahead with its plans to expand service from Orlando to Tampa. There's a proposal in the Florida legislature to expend $50 million to improve the Interstate 4 median. The interesting part of this article is, quote, where Brightline plans to roll in the median at speeds up to 150 miles per hour. Might we eventually see Brightline Florida added to the high-speed news here? We'll certainly keep an eye on Tampa expansion developments. Moving on to NEC and Acela, Alstom tweeted and posted their 10th Avelia Liberty train set rolling out of the factory to X and Instagram and was promptly roasted on both platforms. Check out the comments, they're pretty funny. Let's take a look at the monthly Amtrak numbers. Keep in mind these run a couple of months behind. Acela had a great month for both revenue and earnings. Revenue up 20% year over year. Acela earnings the best they've been on a monthly basis in the 14 months I've been tracking it. Overall, NEC revenue up 15% over last year with earnings off slightly as NEC Regional continues to underperform. NEC passenger miles outperformed projections by 9% in October. This puts NEC services at 44% of all Amtrak passenger miles. Now you know why they get the big bucks. Speaking of that, if you're not aware, $9 billion in federal state partnership for intercity passenger rail grants dropped for the NEC in November. I made a video about it. Check it out if you haven't seen it. Link in the card and description. And now let's wade into Cascadia ultra high speed ground transportation. Washington state congressional Democrats have reaffirmed support for the project after it got a big fat zero from the FSP national program. The project did, however, get $500,000 from the Corridor ID program to begin the process of standing in line with 68 other projects around the country for the remaining $3.5 billion in the FSP National Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act pot over the next three years. 
Dallas-Fort Worth high-speed ground transportation popping up on the radar again to go along with the $500,000 the project got from the Federal Corridor IDEA program, the North Central Texas Council of Governments Regional Transportation Council approved $1.1 million to extend consultancy for the project in pursuit of NEPA clearance. Two interesting things in that meeting. First, they've been hoping for a FONSI rather than a full environmental impact statement. Second, reps from Dallas were demanding that the Dallas station be underground and not aerial as currently planned. This stance also potentially impacts Texas Central because that proposed Dallas station would be where they end up. That could significantly complicate the approach to Dallas from Houston, and it can mean the station ends up under Dallas Union Station. No news from the federal government, they've settled down for a long winter's nap. And now it's time for Stu's Boo Boos, where we look at everything I missed last month. In the revenge of California High Speed Rail video detailing the FSP National Grants, I made it seem like the $1.1 billion award covered the whole Richmond to Raleigh project. That is just for the section between Raleigh and Wake Forest, North Carolina. Thanks to Boomerang Brian7133 for pointing out that boo-boo, you get a gold star. That brings the gold star total to 10. Silver stars representing an error-free month for me, one. As always, if you notice a boo-boo in a Stu's News presentation, please point it out in the comments. If it's a good one, you win a prize. Special thanks goes out to the Lucid Group Discord channel, one particular anonymous member of that group pointed out a couple of valuable news items. If you'd like to join our motley crew, check out the invite in the description. More Federal Railroad Administration High Speed Rail Corridor videos on the way. Also more High Speed Rail City Pair videos in the pipeline. Up next for Stu's News is the 2023 Year in Review coming soon. But that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you on that big, beautiful freeway.